The famous battles of the so-called English Civil War involved many soldiers from Wales, Scotland and Ireland. Three men from Pembrokeshire became key figures in the conflict and their exploits all happened here in Wales. They fought for Parliament in a conflict about politics and religion that split communities and even families. But the three changed sides and, in the end, they were tried and sentenced to be shot. But only one of them was executed and the fate of that man was decided by the hand of a child in a grim lottery of death. The three men were Rice Powell, a colonel in the Parliamentary Army, John Poyer, a prosperous cloth merchant and mayor of Pembroke, and Roland Larne, an army major general. When civil war erupted in 1642, most of Wales supported King Charles I, as indicated by the pink on this map. In reality, that meant most landowners were royalists, their workers and tenants may have had no preference. However, one small part of Wales supported Parliament. That was Pembrokeshire. The town of Pembroke declared its support for Parliament. This was important as control of ports and sea lanes could impede royalist support coming from Ireland. Rice Powell and Joint Poyer held Pembroke against an inefficient campaign by the royalist Earl of Carberry. He was replaced and fighting continued. Major General Roland Larn captured, fittingly, Larn Castle. Soon after, he took Cardigan Castle, and after defeating the Royalist army at Colby Moor, near Haverford West, he took the town of Carmarthen. Poyer led a force that captured Carew Castle. After King Charles' defeat at the Battle of Naseby in June 1645, Larn set about clearing up remaining Royalist forces in southern Wales. Within a few months, most was under the control of the Parliamentary Army. But as a Presbyterian, a member of the gentry, and regarded as a political moderate, Larne was distrusted by more radical elements in London. He was soon replaced by a new model army officer, Colonel Thomas Horton. The economic cost of the war, poor harvests, and an outbreak of the plague resulted in the London government being in dire financial straits. It could not pay its soldiers and decided that the Welsh forces were no longer needed. Poyer was told in 1647 to disband his army and hand over control of Pembroke Castle. But as he was owed money for the campaigns he had financed and his Welsh troops hadn't been paid, he, along with Rice Powell, who had become Lawn's deputy, refused. Meanwhile, Larne went to London to plead his case against disbandment and for payment of troops, but he was unsuccessful. He was even arrested back in Wales, but escaped and joined up with Poyer and Powell. It seems that Poyer had been contacted by the Prince of Wales. The three Pembrokeshire men declared for the King, and a serious rebellion was underway. Parliament, then led by Thomas Fairfax, was worried and immediately dispatched a force to stamp out the insurrection. The rebel army was 8,000 strong, but it seems they were poorly armed or not crack troops. They marched east under Rice Powell and encountered 3,000 highly trained men under Colonel Horton at St. Fagans on the outskirts of Cardiff. Larne arrived after the battle had commenced. The colonel won decisively and the king's men fled back west. Powell retreated to Tenby, where he was governor, but he was forced to surrender to Colonel Horton. Oliver Cromwell besieged Larne and Poyer at Pembroke Castle. After an eight-week siege, water and food ran out. They surrendered, and the rebellion was over. The three men were court-martialed in London and sentenced to death, but in a strange twist, Sir Thomas Fairfax decided that only one of them should die. It's said that the three declined to draw lots for the death sentence, and so a child was asked to do it. Two pieces of paper bore the words, Life given by God. The third was blank. The small hand dipped into a hat or a box and drew out the pieces of paper. The merchant mayor of Pembroke was given the blank. John Poyer 
was taken to Covent Garden and shot on the 21st of April, 1649. Rice Powell spent a few years in prison, was later pardoned, and released when King Charles II came to the throne. He seemed never to have recovered the debts he was owed. Roland Lawn was jailed, and his lands were given to Colonel Horton and others. His fortunes seemed to improve after the Restoration, when he became the member for Pembroke in the Parliament of 1661. But his debts must have been large. Shortly before his death in 1675, his wife lamented that he had pawned his cloak and sword and had only three shillings in the world. The rebellion of the Pembrokeshire men ended badly for them. It is now a dramatic chapter in the history of a civil war that very much involved the people of Wales. Mm -hmm.